Hello and welcome back. And in this video, we're going to continue our introduction to AWS, this time circling back around to EC2 for what I'm calling EC2 Part 2. Again, and I'm sorry I keep having to reiterate this, but I just want to make extra clear for anybody that is viewing this video without viewing previous videos that what I'm doing here is providing a high level introduction to Amazon Web Services using oversimplification of concepts for the purpose of providing a frame of reference. So everything that I'm talking about here is going to be very oversimplified, avoiding any deep technical speak or terminology in order just to convey the general concepts that we're talking about. So when we left off last time, we were talking about Netflix and how Netflix utilizes Amazon EC2, Amazon RDS, and Amazon S3. And we talked about how Amazon uses EC2 for web hosting. They use RDS or other AWS database services for things like customer account information and inventory catalog, and how they would also use something like Amazon S3 as the mass storage service for all of the video files for all of the movies and TV shows that they would like to stream to their customers. So now I wanna talk about what actually happens when you hit play on one of the movies or TV episodes on Netflix. And so generally what happens here is this is again where EC2 comes back into play. Now if you remember I described EC2 as a computer that has a processor and it has processing power. So that is generally one of the main things that Amazon EC2 is used for is anything that requires computer processing, right? As opposed to something like Amazon E3, which is just for storage or a database, which is for organizing information. Amazon EC2 is for things that need compute power. So when somebody hits play on Netflix, what occurs is that the Netflix code has to go to S3, find that particular television show or movie, pull that file, and then on the Amazon EC2 instance, they're going to either encode or transcode that movie or that piece of data so that it is ready to be sent across the internet down to the user so it can be viewed on their device. So encoding or transcoding video, again, is very processor intensive and so it requires something like an EC2 server in order to accomplish that task. So again just to recap as this is a very quick video Amazon EC2 is good for any type of processing activity. So whether that's web hosting whether it's an encoding transcoding whether it's something that is graphically intensive whether it's something that where's a lot of mathematical equations going on anything that needs general basic processing EC2 is the solution that you're looking for. So coming up next, we're actually going to leave the VPC AWS services sphere, and we're going to take a look more in a large scale of AWS, and especially take a look at this map and start to talk about their global infrastructure, right? How are they set up from the 35,000 foot view? And then we'll kind of take that view and drill back down to the VPC to kind of bring everything around full circle. And I just want to make a quick note that this image is provided specifically by Amazon with the image source link at the bottom. And with that, we will conclude this video. Thank you for watching. You may now move on.